So this video is going to be about making a really cheesy little side-scroller game. So a while ago I realized that I had no idea about how you could make such a game, so I decided to just leap in and make a bunch of mistakes and just try to figure it out. With the kind of pre-agreed upon notion that I'd be doing a bunch of reinventing of the wheel. Um, so I'm currently making the game, just kind of throwing it together whenever I get the time. Um, and I'm doing so awkwardly. Uh, but I'm further along than, than what's presented in this video. Uh, and I just had the idea that I'd make this into like a small video series of what I've uh, awkwardly figured out. Um, so the first video is about the initial bare bones attempt, which is basically a small circle um, which can jump around. Um, so it's here, I'm not really sure how a small circle is going about jumping around. But you can see it's a very simple 2D world. Uh, there's bricks, you can jump on them, collide with them, um, and he's eventually going to have enemies to squash. So yeah, you can kind of see the the basic idea. You can, I don't really know what's going on in these little worlds, you just kind of take it for granted as a kid when you're playing side scrollers that there's these rectangles floating around. Oh, I just flew to, uh, fell to my death. Uh, yeah, there's these rectangles uh, floating in the, in the sky and there's enemies that are just pacing back and forth waiting for you to squash them. What do they think they do when, they, when they've killed the player? I guess they just keep pacing. Sad life being an enemy of a, in a video game, but anyway. Um, so the way that everything is, is handled here is just there's uh, an array of these little square objects and the ball player has um, some initial velocity and it just moves around in its little world. And the, the, the program is shown here, it's just programmed with Eclipse in Java and it's just constantly polling the keyboard uh, every game loop uh, to see if you've held down the up or down or left or right buttons and if it does so if you have, it uh, adjusts the, the velocities in that direction accordingly. So um, the first thing to do is test for collisions. How do you know uh, if you've actually collided, um, uh, if two squares have collided? And you can see that it's, it's uh, I've made a little cheesy video, you can see my editing skills or lack thereof here, but it's very uh, easy. So if we set up a square and just separate things into like a left side, a right side, an upside, and a, and a lower downside, um, it's really simple to check these two squares have collided. So we have two squares, one and two. Uh, there's four checks you need to do. The first one is that is the right side of the first one greater than the left side of the second. Okay, the left side of the first, uh, less, uh, less than the right side of the second. The lower part of the first greater than the upper side uh, part of the second and uh, the upper part of the first less than the lower part of the second. If these conditions are met, these are the only way that you can have a collision. So you really just need these four statements uh, constantly checking uh, for a collision here. Um, and we can see we have this, we have there are, in this code here are an array of objects. It just cycles through them to check if the, play, if, if the player has collided with any of these blocks. And that's just this bit of code here. Um, this, this really one uh, if statement. If it has, it stops the player. So you do that and you run the program and every time you update it you just move the velocity by some small, uh, move the position according to the velocity um, and here's what you get. Um, not very exciting. So we have this little ball floating in space. Uh, you can move it, send it flying and ta-da! If you put in that nice uh, collision detection test it stops um, when, it run, when it's about to run into something. But you can see it's not very realistic. First of all, um, it's just gonna keep flying there. It's just floating like, like in space and it has some propulsion somehow. So the way to, to check to, 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 to make gravity is actually quite simple. Gravity is just a constant acceleration and that means you're constantly uh, changing the velocity slightly. So every, um, every cycle of the computer in the, in, the, in the main game loop here, we just increment um, by some value, uh, which is which is gravity. Um, so that happens here. View y is plus gravity, which I just initially set to zero, which is what you'd see, which is what I saw when I first programmed it, and we can run it now. And then, um, ta-da! Nice, we get we get gravity. So now we can run around. Jumping is just giving it an impulse of y velocity, and gravity quickly brings him back down uh, to Earth and he's jumping around. That's great. So the second problem you notice, I'm not pressing anything now, is that uh, our little ball here is in Canada because everything is covered in ice. Uh, so how do you get around that? Well, it's actually not too bad. Um, so why does anything stop anyways? Because there's friction, there's drag. 
And a nice way to model that is to say that you um, have a, uh, a, a force on you that's proportional to how fast you're going. So when you're going, um, uh, when you're not moving at all, uh, the force goes to zero. And uh, when you're moving very fast, you have a, a lot of force. And this is the way air resistance works, for example. And uh, in calculus speak, this is just the rate of change uh, of your velocity is proportional to your velocity. So we can write that down. dv by dt is just some constant times your velocity. And the solution of that, I won't go through, we'll bore you with the details, is just this nice exponential. Now nicely, if you have a very small change in time, this is just approximately equal to uh, this linear decrease. And that's very easy to, to program in, and that's what you use in the game. Um, so we can set some small gamma value. This is actually gamma delta t here. And um, now where do we handle this in the game loop? Um, <clears throat> uh, right here. This is just that vx goes to whatever it was times 1 minus gamma. OK, let's run that now. And he slows down. And it looks a little bit better. Uh, you can move around in this little fake world and jump. And try not to die. Although I've made it very difficult for him to die. Uh, there's plenty of little bugs. Uh, the only other thing I had to check is that um, initially, if you just um, hit jump and give it an impulse, you can just fly up uh, indefinitely in the sky. So the way to get around that is just to do a, a check every time if he's on the ground, meaning has he collided um, in the lower direction and his, velo is his velocity in the, in, in, in the y direction uh, zero. If so, just set some uh, uh, Boolean ground to be true. And then only if he's on the ground, I'll allow him to jump. And then, uh, then you're good to go. Uh, so that's about it for this first little tutorial here, uh, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, the next one, I'll try to make things more interesting by adding sprites. And I'll also post the source code uh, in the comments uh, for this as soon as I find a suitable place to post it. Uh, and feel free to ask questions and all that. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching.